Hi there, I'm Alex from Hammer Missions, and in this guide, we'll be looking at how to improve quality on your 3D maps and models. So as you can see on the screen there, we've got our, our go-to haunt, which is the mill, um, as we uh, we shoot the mill quite a lot. It's our, it's our test ground. So what we're showing you is, is how to improve the quality of your, your 3D maps and models. So... Um, we shall move on. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to open up our missions, select 3D modeling. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to follow the geometry of the mill, which as you can see is an L shape. So that's just, and we won't be following the exact edge. What we'll do is we'll push slightly outside so when the drone's flying over, it actually captures part of the facade as it's flying. So let's mark that up now. It's okay on that. And what we're going to do, just going to push these out here. our L shape, obviously keeping slightly over the facade. So we capture the facade data as well. You'll see this is just an idea. I shall show you how to do obliques shortly. What we'll do is we'll change our altitude and our drone. Now I know for a fact I can go to about 70 feet and ground offset. We are looking at about 40 feet for the mill. And we shall keep our front overlap at 80%, our side overlap at 80%. And we should put on smooth corners. There we go. And we can also put here show planned images. This box here. And that will give us a detail of every single photo it will take as it's flying over the top of the mill. So as you can see here, it'll take 23.1 minutes, two batteries, and we'll take 908 pictures. So the ideal here is to follow the shape of the structure, if at all possible. Let's just push that out slightly. So in the next section, we'll show you how to take the obliques. And then after I've shown you how to do those, we will look at some example shots that we have done. We've done three test runs with the mill, and I'll go through each test run and show you our results. The mill up already, um, and it's also got what looks like a 3D mapping mission over the top of it, uh, but it's greyed out. So this is done via layers, um, which gives you the perfect opportunity to be able to place your obliques so they overlap correctly with your original Nadir or 3D map. So quickly before we, we start planning our obliques, I'll show you how this is done. So back here, as you can see, we've got two missions inside a folder. And what you would do, you'd create a new folder, obviously name your folder, and select layering. As you can see here, if enabled, all the mission files in this folder will be shown as layers whilst planning the missions. And that is why we have a greyed out 3D map. And that's actually our original 3D map. Let's wait for that to load. There we are, you see? That's the map we just planned. So let's get on with our obliques. And what we'll do here, select our mission type, which is facade mapping. 
start in this corner here and we want to overlap the original map as much as we can so we'll go from here down to here this corner here to here 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 and then we'll overshoot that we've now outlined our obliques we'll press OK and you'll notice it's all pointing inwards we don't want that so what we can do there is we'll just rotate our points by 180 degrees there we go so what we need to do now is we need to configure our altitude let's just change our camera over to Mavic 2 Pro so we'll go 70 feet is our top altitude bottom altitude we'll have as 20 feet gimbal angle we'll set at 55 so obviously we want a slight tilt on it now horizontal distance obviously this is entirely up to you but you need to be as safe to the structure as you can obviously here you can see we'd be outskirting other buildings here so we're going to pull that in to about 20 feet so we're a bit closer to the bit closer to the structure now our overlap what we want to do here is we'll push our overlap up because we need as much overlap as we can get we're actually going to go 60 percent overlap let's just go 65. No, we're going to go 60. And we can show our planned images as already highlighted which will be all of the images here so now we're done there you can see it's a little bit confused down here we also need to push this out a little bit so we get that corner that should now capture both points here Sort of bunching going on there. Maybe we should bring this out a bit. This is the flight path the drone will take. It comes into this corner here. It will take multiple shots of this angle here. Then it will carry on its journey around the rest of the building. So there's our oblique shots all set up. As you can see, they overlap the existing as much as possible obviously uh, the existing 3d map and therefore the overlapping between the obliques and the nadir should be perfect in the next section we'll show you some examples of the shots we have taken and uh, this is a an ongoing process so we will be going back out and capturing more over the course of the uh, next few months. So obviously, as you can see here, we've collated three different shoots from the mill and I'll go through each one and explain the positives and negatives. So this was the first one here, which as you can see, the Nadir, and obviously we have a, uh, a facade here as well, which is completely separate. So we'll discount that one because that's meaningless for this exercise. So obviously we just captured the nadir on this. As you can see, 
plenty of overlap. Plenty of overlap on the sides. And we actually captured way too much because we've come all the way out. So we've done it in a large sort of rectangle, rectangular formation. So what we'll do is we'll drop the cameras and we'll zoom in. So as you can see from the nadir position, let's make this large. There we go. As you can see from the nadir, it's collected some really good data. So it's good quality. All the way through. And because we'd pushed right out over the side of the facade, it's actually captured the facade data pretty well as well, but it would have only been from the nadir position, so the top down position. So if we scroll around, obviously we came right out over this as well, so it's captured all of this greenery. It's also captured this side pretty well, down here. But as you can see, the front of the facade pretty much nothing there. Same for this side here. And a percentage of the back. Now this is from overhang. So obviously the nadir position won't pick this up. So if we were to put our cameras back on. You'll see there's not a great deal of overlap down here there is over the back hence the reason it's managed to capture the back end of the facade so generally from a from a nadir position this is very good be great for survey not so good for 3d modeling so let's just pop that down and we'll move on to the second one so you can see from the second one this time round, we've followed the geometry and we've also got obliques. You can immediately tell from this that the obliques are way too far out. They don't overlap the geometry at all. And you'll also see the rear of the facade has no overlap so there is no push out so we can get the facade from the nadir position as well let's make this one bigger as well so what we'll do here so we'll turn off our cameras there we go and there you can see actually it's not too bad see this time around because we've got some overlap and facade we picked up our obliques it's actually rendered this side really quite nicely it's all looking pretty good until we get to the back which looks horrendous and this side's not so great either now, a lot of this will be to do with no overlap or overhang in the nadir position. So it has nothing to tie these two images together. And therefore, it just makes a mess. Similar over here as well. There's actually some overhang here that it hasn't managed to pick up. And the uh, obliques haven't managed to pick it up either which is where we came up with the idea of moving the obliques closer in and getting them to overlap the 3D mapping or the nadir position. Let's bring that down and move to number three. So you immediately see from number three, we followed the geometry and again, the obliques are tight here. We've moved the obliques right in and made them tighter. Again, there's a facade here as well, which we shall ignore because that was on a separate, separate mission altogether. 
So let's make that large. There we go. And turn off the cameras. And you can immediately see it's fairly detailed. So there are still some bits that need work here, for example. And this is, I think, because it's being captured from behind this tree. It's caught behind this tree, so it hasn't managed to pick this up. But then a deer position is very good. This facade here is rendered pretty well. And this one looks good. Let's come around this side here. It's not bad. Again, there's some overhang here that it hasn't managed to pick up. Now that can be rectified by doing, so I think we did literally one pass with the obliques. Obviously the more passes that you take, the more data it's gonna collect. So this was, as I said, this was just with one, one pass, I think at about 70 feet. Um, but the recommendation would be multiple passes as if you remember the facade mission or the oblique mission that we set up ran from 70 feet down to 30 feet. If you let that whole mission run, then you'll get a lot more data. We'll come around the back. There's the back of the facade. cameras back on close this down so as a conclusion I think the best options are when you want to improve your 3d model is to follow follow the geometry of the object and overlap your obliques as hard in as you possibly can to give you plenty of overlap between your nadir or your 3d mapping and your obliques to bring up the quality of the image. And obviously, as I said, we only did one single oblique pass on this, but the more passes, the better, and therefore you can collect more data. You can even do that with the 3D mapping mission. So you can collect some images in a high position and then create another mission, another mission plan at a lower altitude and collect those as well. The more, th the more data you have, the better quality image you're going to get. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any queries or questions, please feel free to contact us on team at hammermissions.com and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.